Hey, it's the podcast guy. Something I talked on on podcast. It's the Sutton Podcast. And there it is. Sutton United have the GM Vauxhall Conference. have put down first division Coventry City. Winners of the FA Cup themselves less than two years ago. And what a moment to enjoy for the fans of this Surrey side. They've had their moments before, but never won like this. But the whistle goes down. You like the Sun United. Sutton United from the National League are through to the last 16 of the FA Cup. No longer English football's perennial non-league club. A 123-year crescendo reaches a new peak for Sutton United, who are promoted to the Football League for the first time. Hello and welcome to another episode of Sutton United Talk Time on podcast. It's the Sutton Podcast in association with Lucky Star Gym. I'm your host, Mike, and with me on today's panel, we have got Paul and Andy. I'm sure the Prediction League will be mentioned with two of the top three on. Um, in this episode, we're going to be covering the routine four in a row win. You know, we, yes, so easy nowadays. We've done the score against Swindon, and we are actually going to look forward to the visit and revenge of Stockport. No less than 6-0, boys. No less. <laughs> um, engagement is important. Please join that discussion and uh, stay connected. Share your thoughts and comments with um, at Sutton Podcast across all the social medias. Um, I do try to make sure I respond to everything, but thank you very much. And big shout out to everyone who does it um, already. Um, I didn't look up when you guys were last on because I literally got in from work quickly, did the link and everything, and then they dinner. So I haven't actually... Um, done an awful lot um but andy how have you been it's been a while i know that yeah it has been um but I, it's certainly we didn't win the last time i was on um that doesn't um, narrow it down at all no it, it, it doesn't <laughs> i've got a feeling it was the game we lost three two we lost um we got back to two all and, and then we lost three really late three two oh, i can't think right. who it was yeah, it was probably like october or something I yeah think. yeah um how have you been anyway yeah, but all, all good. Obviously, much better in the last few weeks. Uh, after I think, like everyone, just had kind of given up after what was it, Grimsby? Uh, yeah. Um, which was yeah, you know, it was a dire game. It, it was like right, we had to beat them. So, so I couldn't pretty, yeah, pretty much like everyone, given up and thought, uh, you know, start looking forward to to the summer and <laughs> next season. And and yeah, like, I don't know. It's it's the hope that kills you, they say, isn't it? So, Absolutely. Um, well, that, that Grimsby game is possibly going to be uh, pinpointed as the, uh, the the torpedo moment where suddenly we got something that we didn't um, deserve and uh, things started slowly but started turning. Um, and Mr Chalmers, first of all, an apology, sir, because I rather flippantly said at the end of the last episode, Chalmers, if he remembers, and then I stopped recording and I went, oh, actually, uh, he's only actually forgotten one. And he did remember it. That he did join it. It was just the day before. He went, who you got on? I was like, you, hopefully. Um, so how have you been, sir? <laughs> yeah, very good. Very good. Thank you. I was, uh, and Andy mentioned the hope that kills you. That's been a bit of a strap line for me uh, <laughs> recently. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Just don't know what's, what's coming around the corner, do we? But no. no in general, I've been good. I was thinking about when you asked Andy as well when he was last on. I couldn't quite picture it, but as he was talking, I think it came to me. It was uh, Newport. Oh, was it? Me. Okay. January. It's uh, New Year's Day, possibly, I think that was, that game. So, was that no, was it around then? It wasn't New Year's Day. That was, um, it was at... Wimbledon, wasn't it? That's Newport. That was Boxing Day. Yeah. It was Newport, was it? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, mean, yeah. I could be wrong. <laughs> It's a scrappy one all like it's, it's more likely than yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like I'm wrong. Right. Let's, be, let's be honest. It's more likely <laughs> than I'm wrong. Um, uh, right, so <laughs> I didn't realise that the last podcast, the Good Friday one, um, didn't properly upload to YouTube until um, a couple of people mentioned it yesterday, um, including Anthony Fenton, the assistant manager, um, <laughs> which it took me a while to kind of go, oh, right, thanks for letting me know. And I went and sorted it out because it was like it stuck up low at like 96% or something. Um, and then later on, I was like, hang on a minute, does that mean that you listen to the podcast? And he's like, oh, yeah, yeah. I was like, well, I'll apologise for the first one, mate, but the rest is on you. <laughs> Apparently, he listens, so we've got to behave now. Um, 
But it's there. So if anyone wants to listen to that one as well as this one, um, it is now uploaded and this one should be uploaded, hopefully, um, if YouTube behaves. Um, but I didn't, again, didn't really look into it. They're doing a, a auction for the shirts, but I haven't properly looked at that yet. Um, for the aubergine dream shirts, which obviously I'm wearing, not my one, my one is not up for auction, it's mine, you can't have it. Um, but for the game, um, I kind of fell, well, I didn't fall entirely, but I kind of fell for Steve's bluff, and I went with one change, and I took out Josh and put in um, Juki. Um, I know someone else took out Josh and put in Amari, um, but... Did you two get? Was it the lineup you expected an unchanged lineup, or did you think he was going to chop and change it as he had hinted? Um, Andy, we'll start with you. I'll be absolutely honest. I hadn't, I hadn't really um, heard for pretty much comment, so I, I assumed he was he was going to stick with the lineup. I, I, I think that's what's been interesting, and, and I think. I mentioned the kind of Grimsby game of, of uh, a few weeks ago. I'll be honest with you, I was getting quite frustrated with the chopping and changing. It was a bit, you know, so much week on week. It was like, you know, Clay would come in, then he'd disappear again, and then Coley was like, and, he, and he'd think, well, is he just like trying players out? Has he given up on this season? Um, is he just looking, you know, planning for next year, working out who he wants to keep? And then it's been bizarre. Well, not bizarre, I guess, but on based on the results. But you know, hell, we've had now had an unchanged team for 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 a number of weeks, and maybe it's not even the team that many of us would have thought would be an unchanged lineup a month ago. Um, uh, you know, there's, there's no Eastman, John Goodliff. I know they've had injuries, but these guys on the bench, Bazanis has obviously disappeared, and, and and you know, some of those kind of stalwarts have have, have kind of. You know, they're, they're not around, but it's a settled team, and it's and it's working. So yeah, I, I, I'll be honest. As I said, I, I have not really heard the pre match comments, but yeah, I expected him to stick stick with a, a winning formula. Fair enough. I mean, yeah, you're, you're dead right. He, he did sort of tinker man. I think a couple of people started calling him, but it could just be Paul that he was um, trying to find who worked well doing what. I mean, uh, is it what you expected, or did you expect some changes? Yeah, I think I was half expecting a couple of changes. Um, obviously, I haven't played uh, on Friday. Um, I was I was thinking, you know, was, we put a shift in definitely. It was a it was a hard battle, and you know, hang hang on a bit at the end. Um, so I thought perhaps there would be a couple of changes, but yeah, I was I was quite happy that there wasn't, and uh, it was uh, it's, as Andy has said, it's a bit of a settled side now, and. And I think that's something that works well for us. It certainly worked well for us in the past, um, in our previous seasons uh, in the football league. You know, we were pretty easy to pick a side, wasn't it? Um, and yeah, it's good. Hopefully, it is a case of he's found his best side and and he's going to try and stick with it as best as he can. And you know, I think there will be a few changes here and there. Mm. Um, but um, yeah, I think I was I was quite happy. Yeah, I mean, it seems insane. You mentioned Eastie. Like six months ago, Feasty's name's not on the team sheet. Everyone's having kittens. Oh, for God's sake, we're going to struggle today. And and now, <laughs> love the man, but you're barely like, oh, Christ, he's just come off the bench. I forgot he wasn't playing. Um, so, uh, yeah, <sighs> hopefully, long may it continue. As Is he injured, he, do we know? I think he was injured. Um, he didn't he, back he wasn't the in bench. the squad. He wasn't in the squad yesterday, was he? Yeah, he came on, Paul. Did he? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, you got to edit that bit out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that. <laughs> no, oh, you're, up. you're up. That might be the clip. I, the the reason, well. the reason I said, the reason I said that is because um, I did actually ask the question of a couple of the other guys around me. Obviously, yeah. you couldn't. You were maybe out of earshot, um, and I asked a couple of the other guys around me, and they said he wasn't on, even on the bench. So I, I, I obviously on. was. You yeah, I must have been. No, Clay's 16. 16, isn't he? No, what Clay that came on? I can't remember. I'm sure he came on. Sure. Oh. Andy, Andy, did he come on? I, I, don't, I don't want to come in. I've been worried. I'm, but I don't remember him coming on. Um, oh, no, he didn't I come I don't remember on. him. Who no. On? Clay. Who Was it Clay? Yeah. That, yeah. Sure. No, you're I'm, sure it was, I'm sure it was no. skinny. Um, Mate, I'm looking. Skinny. I'm looking. Oh, you can't see it. I'm looking at flash scores. Oh, you can't trust 
He wasn't even on the bench. I was right. Oh, for God's sake. <laughs> yeah, well, that keep means that, definitely going keep out. That bit <laughs> in, <Mike. laughs> keep that bit in. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, I, I, I reference I it every on. minute. <laughs> yeah, I saw you came on. I'm sorry, came on. Well, bang goes my knowledge. Anyway, um, <laughs> so what were you, Paul, sort of expecting before the match? Um, you've just come off a bizarre free match winning run. Um, Swindon had beaten Notts County, but that's no biggie because we beat them twice. Um, but what were you expecting from the game, Paul? Apart from Eastie coming on or not coming on or coming on or not coming on. <laughs> <laughs> I was hopeful, you know. I, I saw, I looked at these games that we, we had, um, mainly, let's look at the last two, for example. I was going up to Salford thinking, oh, we really could do winning this. We've, we've started, we've hit a bit of a roll. We've won the last two. And I was going up to Salford, certainly thinking, yeah, I think I'll take a point. But with this one, it was, I, need, I think we need three points. We need to win home games. Um, we... I'd have taken four points, I think, from these two games. Mm-hmm. I'd have been quite happy with that. So, so we won that, and I thought, okay, draw would be all okay, but not quite enough. We need to put pressure on the sides above us, uh, and hopefully a win, and uh, and keep momentum going, going into the next few games, which are, I think, going to be a bit tougher. Yeah. I mean, it's funny now that you, everyone was like, oh, four points from two games. But as soon as we won the first one, he's like, no, we want six now. Um, <laughs> but what, what were your thoughts, Andy, before the game? Were you hopeful, expectations? or? Yeah, to be honest with you, um, like if, if, as you said, if you look at Swindon's form, it hadn't been great. Um, they beat Notts County, but everyone's beaten Notts County. Like they're, 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 they're fallen off a cliff, and not they, since uh, the manager went. Um, so, yeah, I, I did... I did kind of expect us to win um i, you know, I think we'll, we'll kind of recognize that at this stage of the season these are the teams you want to be playing the teams who maybe mentally are kind of thinking of their summer holidays already um mm. so, sometimes it works the other way around and we've got they've got no pressure and but but generally i find in particularly in the lower levels quite often you know players are like you know they're, they're, they may not even be their next season they don't want to get injured if they're looking yeah. for a contract i think these are the games you want to play salford swindon and accrington they, they are like you know and that's not to kind of undermine how well we've played but they are the teams you want to play and, and yeah I, I was i was expecting us to 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 win despite what i put in the prediction league i told you that was just, <laughs> that's just a, like a a, a superstition that's, that's a now yeah um, as a I was, yeah i was expecting a win <laughs> it was a good day um for you yesterday all round, wasn't it uh, with your other team, oh, well, with, with Ipswich, yeah, 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 it's been uh, um, but good bank, good Easter, four wins, so yeah, 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 yeah. It's, a, <laughs> it's, <fantastic. laughs> it's a different four out of four of you. Um, but I mean, we we did all right, we started well, and again, I wrote loads of things down, but I had no idea of the orders. Um, but their keeper, despite what happened second half he actually made quite a few saves um and i, I think he did all right at, sort of in the first half at least um i know we've got some criticism <laughs> later on but um were you kind of i know charlie scored relatively early um do you think we should have scored before then i know steve was a little bit critical um we'll start with you andy what were your kind of thoughts on the first half in general and, and charlie scoring again for us yeah, like he, he's made such a difference, hasn't he? Like yeah. to have a uh, that that kind of those goal threat from from central midfield. Um, yeah, he, he's made it, and, and you know, his 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 partnership with Beautyman maybe is you know one of us kind of surprises, and 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 it's good to see. Um, and particularly Beautyman playing so well. Um, because you know, as you said earlier, we all kind of expect Eastman to be replaceable, and 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 if he's not there, we're in trouble. But this this partnership between the two of them, I think, looks really effective. Um, and and yeah, yeah, it was it was nice to have an early goal to to, to ease the nerves. Like oh, you know, he was so unlucky with the the volley he hit. Um as well shortly after which i think was with his right foot um despite being a very predominantly left-footed player i mean he, he hit that and, and the keeper actually made a good save very good save from mm. from that um but 
yeah, I, I think it was it was one of those where we looked comfortable. We got the early goal. weren't too many nerves. It, but you you did think actually we've been so dominant. Really, should be two up. Um, yeah. and that was the danger. Yeah, yeah. Um, Paul, what were your thoughts? Early doors um, and Charlie's goal. First half. Yeah, I mean, uh, it was it was Harry Smith who put the ball in, wasn't it? Harry Smith was out. Was it Harry Smith? Or was it Coley yeah. who put it in? Please don't be it was Smith, it. wasn't it? It was Smith. Yeah, yeah. I don't yeah. even know who yeah, came on. What's the point of asking me? <laughs> and I think I said, I think I said, you know, oh, Harry Smith's out there wide. We need him to be in the middle. <laughs> win, we win the headers. And he's put a great ball in. And Charlie Lakin's come in. And obviously, he's come in one way. Keepers sort of not got close to it, really, has he? Yeah, I, no. I know it was a distance away. So, you know, my eyes aren't the best. But I think, yeah, great run from Lakin. And what a player he's been. Yeah, I mean... I saw something on social media where either I think it might have been Tom Williams or Gab Sutton were saying, you know, which of your loan players are you looking forward to having back most? And Burton, there was a couple of Burton, well, at least one Burton fan saying Charlie Lakin. He's and a couple of our guys, uh, a couple of our supporters posted as well saying, yeah, yeah he's a real find and we'd love to keep him. <laughs> uh, and I think we'd struggle to, to be honest with you. I can't see Burton letting him go because he has done so uh, well. Well, I mean, you never know because um obviously he's been out on loan and a couple of Burton supporters have been saying we've never really given him a chance. He went to Wimbledon, didn't really get a look in. So mm. I'm not saying he will, but it's one of those mm. things of players sometimes like like Eastby sometimes find mm. somewhere and go, actually I'd rather be here because I know what I can yeah. offer this team. You know, you never know. Oh um, um, I'd love to have him, certainly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, no, welcome in Roman Arms. <laughs> yeah. Might um, the other way. But, <laughs> oh, yeah. But no, as you said, um, yeah, felt like we should have should have had another one. Um, yeah. Our dominance uh, was was pretty good. Uh, we, were, we were pretty much dominating the game, and I think um, if it, if we'd gone in at least two 0 no one would have been surprised. And I don't think they'd have been the away side would have been um, shocked by it either. No, um, I mean, there was one. One disappointing point of uh, Jacko having to come off injured. Obviously, mm. we don't know what it is, and we're unlikely to know how severe it is because that's <laughs> just not the way we roll anymore. Um, but um, other than that, it was almost a perfect half. We could have scored one, maybe two more, um, but it was a nice control game football. You said, Paul. Um, second half. Um, right in front of us, Andy. Where, where do you stand again? Or sit or Sam? Well, yesterday I was on the TARDIS. Um, I was oh, with a friend. Right. I was with a friend who had two kind of small kids, and um, that seemed to be the best place that they could basically have a bit of space to run around in. Um, so that's where I was for both halves. So, so you're yeah, not such a good view of the of, of the uh, the second goal. Um, in fact, you know, it was one of those. Was, Is that really gone in? I, what, yeah, what's happened? Yeah. <laughs> what's happened? I can't have gone in. Um, they're the kind of goals. I think Dan said it as we were standing there. They're the kind of goals we 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 used to concede in. We're not used to scoring. <laughs> um, but I mean, and you've obviously seen, or you may have seen the replays. Um, and um, I did double check, and uh, Josh is not on a goal bonus, so quite happy for them to fight and give it to Josh. <laughs> That's absolutely fine, no problem. Um, but how are you? I, I don't even see it much, but how are you? How were you sort of feeling at that point? Was was it like a little bit like, hey, what's going on up there? Yeah, yeah, it was a it was a really weird one, wasn't it? It was uh, yeah, the, the, and I think we've been helped out uh, a couple of times now with the yeah, that, that's clearly a goal pink keeping error. Um, but when we played Accrington, obviously the first goal was uh, I think the, the, the goal keeping error as well when we he came flying out and Smith went round him. So um, yeah, yeah. You know, Sometimes you need, you need, you know, you, you overseas and it, it evens itself out, doesn't it? And we've probably had a lot of bad luck, I think, and, and maybe we've had a bit of good fortune in the last uh, couple of games. Um, yeah. But yeah, well, I think we, yeah, we we deserved it. We were a better team. We deserved yeah. to be 2 up. Um, and, you know, in the way the way we got there was maybe fortuitous. Our other two goals weren't, and, and um, yeah, and good good for, for, for Josh Coley as well. He was, yeah. was another one like Beautyman, who's really um. Seemed to have found his feet 
in the last few games and, and it's good to see and maybe it's a slightly different style of playing that that has, has suited some you know one or two of these players like Beautyman and and Coley I think um um so so it's nice nice and I hope he I hope he does get it because it looked like it might have even been on target I know it's, I know it's just from a strange angle but <laughs> it was a yeah it's a I weird think, one I do think it was curling in ever so slightly I'm not going to slow yeah, yeah. the video but Paul what, what did you think when um we were standing there watching it well, um, I was going to say, Andy, you had a lot better view of it than I did because I didn't actually see it. I got chatting to, I, I popped into the bar to see someone. I didn't even have a drink. I popped into the bar to have a chat with someone and I was just about to leave. And then this other fella started chirping up and, and we, we spoke for another minute or two. And I was literally walking out, just about to walk out of the bar and I heard the cheer go up. So, <laughs> so my view of the goal was from Mike's uh, Mike's video. <laughs> I'll be honest, I watched it on Mike's video. I saw it better on Twitter <laughs> yeah. ten minutes later than I, I yeah. did at the time. Yeah. Um, and most people love that video. The club sort of asked uh, the reason why I found out about Josh's uh northern old bonus is um I was asked by Tony and someone else if they were if they were able to use the video and send it to the EFL to see um if they could uh claim it as Josh's goal. Which I find, I, I mean, I don't understand it all, obviously, but apparently the ref said he thought it was Josh's goal. But if we're saying it's Josh's goal, why would anyone else, why would the EFL say, no, it's not? Um, it's bizarre. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, it was a fortuitous moment. Uh, but yeah, great. I saw it great. shared in a few places as well, Mike. Yeah, I, I know. I saw that message. I know, I know. So I don't know how many, uh, how many views it's oh, had. But famous now. Go viral <laughs> again. <laughs> Didn't go viral for the pizza cup master, but I'm in viral for a goal. <laughs> um, but Harry scored our third, his, I believe, tenth league goal of the season, which is the most we've had. Um, so it you know, be possibly one of the easiest goals he's going to score. Um, the ball was just planted lovely on his head. And what was your thoughts on that one, Paul? Did you see that one? Or? Yeah, I saw that one, yeah. <laughs> I've got to say, Josh Coley, the last few games, um, has been, uh, I'd, I'd say, a revelation. I think he's been really, he's, he's improved uh, a lot of the things he's doing. Um, his balls into the box have been great, and it, that was a great example. You know, mm -hmm. he's he fizzed it across pretty much, hasn't he, um, from, from the byline, not far off. And, uh, yeah, very easy for Harry Smith to put uh, the icing on the cake i was yeah well happy i thought i'm a pessimist at heart you know so i was <laughs> still thinking oh you know one more maybe and we oh, might be safe. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, he, he did say in the post-match interview that that's what he's been told to do get the ball into that area and if he gets into that area he can then moan at harry to go oh, i got the ball there <laughs> this is, what, what were you doing um but yeah you're, you're quite right over the last few games there's definitely been less of the Josh from from everyone around us. Um, he's kind of he's going on the outside and cutting in, mm. um, and he's doing what we signed him for. Just very late, I like actually, a lot of the players. I actually tweeted him a couple of months ago, uh, praising him for getting to the byline. Uh, so I might have to take some credit for it. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? I would. Um, Bandy, what, what were your thoughts and your view of the uh, third goal? Yeah, yeah. I'd, um, as Paul said, I, you know, um, he he really whiz, he really fizzed him across, didn't he? It was it was like um, yeah, it was quite an unusual technique in a way, but it just made it so straightforward for Harry. He could just kind of redirect the the the, the pace on the ball back in back across the goal, and 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 it's in. And, and yeah, I think um, uh, yeah, I think Coley has, has improved so much in, in recent weeks i found it I, when he when we signed him i know an exeter supporter um and i asked him about him and and he, and he said that technically you look at him and technically he's got everything that you you need of a player um but he, he just said but he, he's not having the impact in the final third he's not getting the numbers in terms of goals and assists um but but yeah no was that two well maybe a goal or it's a, it was two goal involvements was it yeah. whether it was an assist or a goal or, 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 or two assists but, but he scored the other week as well. Yeah, yeah, exactly at Forest yeah. Green. So, so yeah, he's really turned that 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 part of his game around, which I, th I think is is all that was kind of missing us. So I think technically he's a good player, um, but but as as a winger, he has to have those numbers, and and that's what he's 
is, is now delivering. Yeah, I mean, I'm just talking rubbish, but it might be that everyone's expecting Steve to work miracles with the strikers. But actually, he's telling the, the wingers, this is how yeah. I want the ball to land on my head. And he's yeah. there to explain to them what he wants in their runs. So it could be that we're, <laughs> seeing, could, we're looking at the wrong things there. He might be helping all the others. Um, well, there was some celebration in the director's box uh, as we didn't have to pay that clean sheet bonus again when they scored from a free kick we shouldn't have given away, uh, which then got deflected. Um, but these are things that pay off. Once you win in the games, you don't remember them. Um, but, uh, Paul, what, you were from the same end as me. What did you see of the goal? Or did you just see the free kick and it go in? Did you realise there was a deflection? I didn't realise there was a deflection, no. Um, frustrated by the foul, it was unless a bit of an unnecessary foul, wasn't it? And it's those mm -hmm. little mistakes that in the past have cost us points. Um, so it's nice that it wasn't a, a points affecting thing, but you know, goal difference is relatively important, yeah. So it's a little bit frustrating on that sense, but it's nice to have that as the frustration rather than us throwing points away for stupid fouls and giving penalties away and things like that. So, yeah, yeah it Absolutely. was, it was a, yeah, it could have been worse. <laughs> um, and Andy, this one would have been happening in front of you, assuming you weren't in the bar or. No, it did happen in front of us. Still, I didn't see the deflection, to be honest, because um, he's side on. Um, but, but yeah, yeah it, was, it was frustrating. Um, like it, we haven't kept a clean sheet in some time at home because we, we did a forest green, but I can't remember the last clean sheet at home. Um, so yeah, it's frustrating. I, I guess for me, I'd put one all in the prediction league and I'd be selfish and saying at least I've got a point. Because, uh, <laughs> but it's very similar to um, again Anchorage. Then that was the same, wasn't it? We were three 0 up and seed. Just, 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 yeah, just out of nothing. Yeah. Um, and like the, the away fans don't even really get too excited about it, and <laughs> it just felt like a bit of a end, end of a match, and, and maybe people had switched off, but. Overall, obviously, be, yeah, I think it's a great performance. So you can't, you can't really be too critical of, 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 of conceding that late goal. No, I mean, I think Accrington fans didn't even know they'd scored. Yeah, because um, yeah. we were really standing there going, "Hey, what happened?" Um, but as you mentioned, we won relatively easily in hindsight. Obviously, at the time, it was like Paul. Oh, Oh god, we need another one, we need another one, we need another ten. Um, but it's relatively easy. Um, should have been more. Um, could have really done the goal difference and world of good. Um, but our fourth victory moves us out of the relegation zone. Obviously, games in hand and all the rest of it, the teams around us, but they've got to play all those games while we get to kind of recuperate and plan ahead each week. Um, so how are you kind of feeling overall, Andy, with the performance and how it's left us at the moment for the final four games? Like, as, you know, happy with the performance, happy with four wins in a row. Like, I think, with like everyone, it is frustrating that the Colchester and Grimsby keep picking up. Maybe even unexpected points. Like Tranmere away is a is a is a tough game, and I did. I you know they're, they're good at home, Tranmere. Um, I maybe wasn't expecting um um is it Colchester won it to yeah. pick up a point there. Similarly, you know, just just if they did on Good Friday and got the late win, um, Grimsby picked up a point. So we could do without that. Um, we, you know, let's let's be honest. Um, um, it's it, if they keep picking up these these points, it's going to make it really difficult, and we might need to win or at least get three wins and a draw out of our last four games. And with the opponents we've got, it's going to be that's going to be tough. Um, but I thought, you know, I didn't think we'd be in this position three weeks ago. Uh, so so, you know, we we've got to kind of be positive. I think if if we do. Um, I think I think Colchester and Grimsby have also got quite tough run-ins as well, haven't they? They do. I think they've yeah. actually played each other. They I'd say out the, yeah, I'd say out of the two of them, I, I almost think Grimsby are the ones to are maybe more likely to catch because if you look at their form this year, I think they've only had two wins in 2024. Um, yeah. So I think they're the ones maybe who are, who are more likely to 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 be able to catch them. Um, yeah. Than, than Colchester, but but yeah, overall, obviously happy. We're still we're still in it and fighting. Exactly. I mean, it was Ali Ali that scored their goal, which is really yeah. disappointing, Mr. Smith. <laughs> um, but Paul, um, 
what we, what do you kind of feel about the how it's left us um, for the final running? I think they've got sort of they've almost got double our games left. Grimsby, I think. I'm not sure if it's seven. No, I think Grimsby got six. Six. Okay. Um, yeah, they got two games in there. Sorry, it was Colchester. Sorry, I think they've got three yeah. or something. Yeah, I think they've got yeah. seven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah um, no, so I've I've looked at, I've looked at all their fixtures and everything, and uh, I was I was half expecting Grimsby to beat Bradford. If I'm honest with you, right. um, Brad Bradford are absolutely shocking. They're right stone last in the uh, form table, and mm-hmm. I, I think that goal coming back against them uh, against Grimsby, ninety third minute, player sent off as well. I don't know how important a player he is for them but you know he's he's given her a penalty and got sent off their um their player so then getting that point take nicking that point off them that's a real kick in the teeth yeah and i hope that you know I hope that drags on for a bit they that, that that affects them in the next game and and the one after that as well <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah it's gonna be tough i was looking at um, who we've got to play next in our in our last four and they are we're second in the form table. We're playing mm-hmm. third, fourth, sixth, and eighth Ooh. in the form table currently. You know that's going to change as, as we go on. Yeah. Um, but you know, Salford uh, were uh, been doing sort of all right as well, and we we got a result up there away from home. So who knows? But next one coming up, Stockport is going to be tough. It's going to be so tough. I heard you say earlier about you take six nil, and I was like, <laughs> we don't need a minus fourteen goal difference against one team. <laughs> no, <laughs> we're winning six nil. I'll let Matthew have the other two. Um, yeah, yeah. I'm just hoping that they uh, massively underestimate us, but um, we'll see. We'll see. Um, yeah, but can't see it. <laughs> you, you mentioned Stockport. Um, how how do we win? Um, sort of. Um, tying up Paddy Madden and not letting him out of the change of rooms. Um, but how, how can we how can we really in Stockport? Paul, you can go first. Yeah, um, we need a bit of luck. I think um, they're they're confident, but they you know they're going to be a bit edgy. I'd like to think as well. You know, it's very tight at the top there. They had a bit of a gap at one point, and they don't now. It's 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 relatively tight. Um, <laughs> It could go either way, but we need a couple of things to go our way. We need to be clinical. Um, mm-hmm. We need, you know, we get a chance, we've got to take it. Um, yeah. We may have to hang on at times, you know. We might need to sit deep a bit, a bit more deep than we would like to. Um, but we should have some confidence and we should have some faith in our own ability. And I'd like to think we're going to show up and we're going to give them a good game. And and we're going to give everything we got. Perfect, perfect. Andy, what do you think? How are we going to? Yeah, um, like it, obviously, it's going to be tough. But I, I do think that all of the teams in this division are, are kind of beatable. Like, I, if you look at the table, I can't think off the top of my head, but I'm sure they're all on. Even the top teams are in the 70, 70 points. So I don't think they're, there's the, the dominant teams. Um, yeah, yeah. We mentioned earlier the championship where, where these teams are looking like they're going to be ninety hundred points. Mm-hmm. So, you know, Stockport and Wrexham and all of those have had bad results. Um, they, they're not. I don't think as far away from the rest of the pack. Um, as as in other divisions, and like, you know, could crew the other day, like they they they're going for promotion. They lose three 0 at home to Forest Green. Mm-hmm. These results can happen yeah. in this in this division. I don't think anyone is uh, um, unbeatable. Um, like I don't think based on the obviously the this season, but even last season, I don't think we've matched up well against Stockport the last few times we played them, which is a bit of a concern. Um, um, we had Omar uh, sent off early, didn't we? One game. We did, yeah. Right. Yeah. Mm. Um, and then at the line, the last season, they, they beat us 2 0, quite routine at home. Was it 2 0? I think that was the um, one that I got sent off. Okay. Was, no, that was away. Oh, was it away? Sorry. Yeah, it was um, up there. Omar yeah. got sent off, yeah. Yeah. Um, so uh, but we, we haven't got a good record against them. We, have, we don't match up well. But then again, but maybe this is a slightly different certain, and maybe the. The, the current style of play will match up better against Stockport. Um, I, I, you know, but as I said, I, I don't think I, I don't think it's it's uh, it's un, un, unachievable. Um, I just don't think any of these teams in this division 
Um, they've all got a, they've all got a silly defeat in them. Um, as we said, as we saw with Crew and Forest Green a bit. And, and and I think um, we may need a bit of luck and and to, to be right at the top of our game. But I think we need to approach it with confidence and and uh, and really go for it. A, a draws really you no. Know, we we got to go for a win, haven't we? Well, well, we'll have all those teams at the top supporting us because um, if we were to to go for the win and get the win, we kind of drag them back down a little bit. So I think a four points clear at the moment. Um, but um, <laughs> I did um, Craig Lovett, one of the um, investors, um, was in the bar. He's he was over since this, the Accrington game. as the Australian chap who flew for like twenty three hours. Um, and I was like, oh, I didn't know you were still here. And he's like, oh, yeah, no, no, I've been to all the games. And he's loving it. And I went, you do realise, and he's at Stockport, at the Stockport match, and I said, right. So if we win that, you do realise you're going to be locked in one of the cupboards and not let go home. Because <laughs> <we've, laughs> our fortunes have absolutely turned since you've been here. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, it's one of those, you like, that's a proper Sutton fixture. You're going into it with absolutely no expectation, but a little tiny bit of hope that they can pull it out of the bag and if we win it everyone be like what are we worried for it's fine it's fine no problem <laughs> but we will jump on to the prediction league which um i said i would mention and andy's pointed out he's kind of gone off the board a little bit but i'll let you explain why you've gone off the board andy because um i mean it's a fair a fair reason <laughs> yeah i i i think i I predict. Yeah, I was absolutely certain we'd lose at Forest Creek. We, that, that was like we were right at the lowest point then, um, and I think I predicted us then, and we won. And then I thought, well, I don't want to. I don't want to get too optimistic because it, it's a, it's a double whammy when you lose then. So uh, I started doing the one alls, and, and then since then we've we've been winning and, and going into the the, the game um, yesterday. I did actually think we were going to win. I was going to go for two one. Then I thought, no, because because if we don't. Yeah, then it's yeah, it's a it's a double blur if it isn't it. So if I, I go with one all, and uh, and if I'm wrong, I'm happy. So uh, <laughs> that's that's my tactic. Although to be honest with Stockport, like let's face it, we could I, I've got no idea what to no. yeah. to go for there. Like it could be it could be cricket school. We could win. I, it's <laughs> it's a real lottery that one. Well, there's only four players who could technically win. Neil is quite far back, so the sequence of events for Neil to win. Would need to be up for you. Lots, you guys got to stop playing. Um, he's on 109 points. Chalmers, you're on 119 in mm -hmm. third place. Andy, you're on 124. And Paul is just broke up a little lead of 128. Um, oh. He's gone for the last two matches. He's gone for wins while you've gone for draws. <laughs> so, <laughs> but I think his his prediction of a win has also been uh, the same scoreline. So I think he might be doing the same thing of just predicting the same scoreline uh, just to win the game. Um, but you guys, and as I say to everyone who plays the game and is on the show as well, this isn't your final entry. Still entry, enter after you've heard the, the pre-match videos or anything later on. So you're not tied to what you say here. I'm going to be really, really brave and go for my normal 2-0. I've been wrong 51 times so far this season, so there's no reason for that not to be wrong again. Um, the code is on the screen, but um, Chalmers, what, what do you? What's your early thoughts of the prediction? Uh, I'm really not sure. I mean, I like Andy's 1-1 uh, one, one option, but if he's going to go for that, I can't, can I? I you, can go for you, like. you can go for wherever you like. You can go for wherever you like. Yeah, Andy might be double buffing. You see, he, he could be yeah. having a completely different scoreline plan, and he's going to put it in on the entry form. You don't know. I went for one nil on uh, on um, Monday yesterday, and yes, you did. Uh, I, I said to you, didn't I? Um, I know I went for one nil, but I really don't want it to finish one nil. I really <laughs> want to spend some more to ease the tension a little bit. So yeah, no, I think I will. Um, I think I might go. I'm going to go 3-1. 3-1? So, how, oh. how about that for optimism? 3-1. Oh, Very unlike me. Andy, what's your early early thoughts? Well, maybe double bluffing everyone. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> um, no, I, I, I don't know what I'll go for on the day um, officially. But right now, I'd, I'd, I'd like to be kind, quite, quite optimistic and go for a 2-1. Uh, when I just think I just look back at like maybe the Wrexham game, um, which is I think the last game we played against one of the top three at home, 
and we lost 2-1. But we, we all know we, we really didn't deserve to lose that game, um, particularly with the, the, the penalty that was never given. Um, and they, 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 their winner wasn't, yeah, I remember that assist was, was not deliberate. Yeah. Um, so maybe I think uh, but for all the bad luck we had in the Wrexham game, it's going to turn it round and we're going to get a bit of luck and, and turn it round and win this 1-2-1. One, Perfect, perfect. Well, anyone was still joining, obviously you're going to be too far behind, um, but you'll be in the email group for early next season. Um, right, <coughs> we've wrapped it up now. Um, we've covered everything. That's a nice little speed through. Thanks, Jen. Um, as always, we appreciate your attention, even though I've broken the cup. Um, do follow, like, and share Sutton Podcast on social medias. Don't forget to subscribe and... Uh, yeah, leave us a review on your preferred platforms. Um, thank you to our sponsors, Lucky Star Gin. Thank you to Andy and Paul. Um, thank you to the listeners. We will be back on Sunday with Alex and David. Get the questions and thoughts sent in and take care and we'll catch up soon. Thank you. Bye-bye. United! 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 United!